Governor Holcomb, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Great to see you. The end of year one. How do you approach the end of year one? What, what do you look at back and say, we did this. This was the biggest success of my first year in office. Made a lot of progress on multiple fronts. Um, tribute that all to good, good teamwork and good team chemistry. And we uh, were very clear at the very outset with members of the State House and State Senate that we wanted to not be pests, but we wanted to over communicate and uh, we didn't but, want to see any surprises and very but, transparent. But if you just had one success to name as your biggest success of the year, what would it be? Uh, it was a collaborative and substantive session. It, forward progress. Just the session as a whole. Session as a whole. People uh, throughout the whole state of Indiana said thanks for focusing on uh, building out our roads and bridges and, and paying for it. We, got, we, we have $7.5 billion that are going to be going into our state roads over the next five years. We stood up a substance abuse uh, prevention, treatment, and enforcement office um, like we've never had before. We, we uh, established our first ever direct flight to Europe. Um, we ushered in a record number of job commitments. We're over 30,000 jobs that are coming to the state of Indiana in 11 months. So we're on a roll and there's serious momentum going into 2018. And no concern that raising the gas tax is going to slow down any of that momentum. We in uh, Indiana like to pay for what we build and use. And so we're not debt financing this. We're not kicking this off to our kids or grandkids to pay for. Um, this is truly a user fee and um, the gas tax had not been raised since 2003. So we'd been living on borrowed time mm -hmm. and uh, we hadn't been paying for what we needed. And we did a deep dive and said, this is gonna be data driven. Here's what we want, here's what we need. Now, how do we pay for it? And this became a way of, of doing just that for a long term. On the other end of the spectrum, what was the failure you learned the most from this year? Because this was your first year in office and while you've been around politics, yeah. you had to have learned some things through mistakes that you made through the year. Absolutely. Uh, the key is that I think that you can never um, over communicate, quite frankly, that you have to not assume people uh, know all the details. Sometimes we get a little too much in the weeds. Um, I've tried to make it a practice of being very accessible, very transparent, out state, but you run out of time. And so we, we are seeking to attract more, not less input, more help. Uh, many hands don't make light work, but they certainly make it easier to lift. What did you run out of time on in 17 that you hope to accomplish in 18? I think we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg in terms of what the drug epidemic is doing to our families and our communities. Um, and, and we have a lot more work to do. I know you're going to push for more opioid cent uh, treatment, treatment centers, centers outside of the primary metropolitan centers in Indiana. How key do you think that will be in solving the epidemic in the Hoosier State? Uh, you know, there's no one step and all the money in the world won't solve it. However, having said that, we know at a minimum we need better access, more beds, more treatment centers, and, and then it's a long process from there. Getting on the road to recovery is one thing, staying on the road to recovery is another. Can forcing doctors to sign up to forcibly be, be forced to sign uh, legal documents to inform the state that they're, that they're prescribing opioids, yeah. is, is that a way of slowing the epidemic at all yes. at this point? Uh, we, we have an inspect program where we're now going to require doctors to view that and to know who's getting what. Mm -hmm. uh, we absolutely have to uh, restrict the amount of uh, painkillers that are going into the system. We had over 230 million prescriptions last year, enough for every adult for a month. Um, there, quite frankly, there is just simply too, too uh, many um, painkillers in the flow or in the system right now. And so absolutely, we got to dial that back. We have to have a, Kentucky has a three-day period, Indiana has a seven-day period uh, of, of getting that first prescription filled. Those are steps in the right direction, but we need to continue to make sure we have the right data, the data's fresh, the data is accurate, so that we're not um, wasting resources or, or as, as this epidemic morphs, it's fentanyl over here and meth over here and spice and, and heroin. Uh, we got to know where that is so that we can establish these treatment centers closest to the folks. Another that substance that's being talked about is alcohol and Sunday alcohol sales. Do you support 
allowing Sunday alcohol sales? In, I support in modernizing our alcohol laws in the state of Indiana. Um, it's not part of my agenda. I've been very focused and disciplined and, and have um, established very good relations with the, both the House leadership and members and the Senate leadership and members. And, and this will be carried, the, not just the conversation, but there will be bills carried and I'll, I'll look at, at what comes to my desk. I got a pen, some, I'll use it. Some people may be shocked that Indiana doesn't allow Sunday, Sunday alcohol sales because so many states yeah. and so many counties in different states yeah. have voted to allow uh, blue laws to expire. You know, the more I've researched it and, and looked around the country, it's truly a hodgepodge. Almost no state is, is a mirror image of mm -hmm. another. And we have all evolved. We share some similarities in terms of tiers, um, but in terms of the regulatory environment, the distribution, um, and, 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 uh, and the sale on different days, different facilities. Yeah. It's different all around the country. Our, our, one thing is clear, our uh, legislature, and I'll give credit to both sides of the aisle, um, our legislature has become data-driven and uh, we'll make some advancement this year, I'm, I'm pretty confident. You talk about having your pen, being ready to use it. The legislature's gotta deal with the situation with the DNR and the firearms restrictions on state lands that they thought they had fixed from one year to yeah. the next. And now there's a push to try to fix it this year. Yeah. How, do they get, how can they get it wrong two years in a row? And can they, get it, <laughs> can they finally get it right for outdoorsmen third, and outdoors yeah, people who are concerned? time will be a charm and, and this will be, a, I, I suspect, an easy fix. Uh, we passed an emergency rule that allowed folks by, you know, to, to hunt uh, up until December 3rd. Um, that went well. Uh, now we've got the holiday season to get through and then in January, it's a short session. We'll be out by mid-March and, and, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty confident again, we'll take care of this as well. We saw you in Southeast Indiana just in the last few months, the opening of the, the new facility down there by the, the South Korean company. Mm. Uh, are you hearing from any other companies they're talking about moving to Indiana and in every particular day. Southeast Indiana? I mean, it's the every ports day. Of Indiana. We, are, we are open for business. Um, that is a dynamic region of our state. Obviously, um, growth attracts growth. And uh, Do you compete against I, Governor Matt Bevin? Uh, for, it's, a healthy for com it's a healthy competition. And, uh, do, do you do you guys rip each other about it? Cause, yeah, because because that that corridor right there now with the bridges open, guy. they can yep. they can open these businesses no, that, on either side of the river. And that's the thing. And and um, you know we we compete uh, for jobs around the world um, every day. But at the end of the day, if we don't get it, I want I want Kentucky to because we share that border. That is a growing region, and it's a strength for both of us. And mm -hmm. so the better Kentucky does, the better Indiana does. And uh, we'll continue to partner just as much as we compete. And you guys are both big basketball fans. Well, I mean, I root for the good guys. <laughs> um, and uh, and I, I look forward to, uh, I look forward to uh, a rivalry coming back, back on the scene here, hopefully in the, in the near future. When you were in Southeast Indiana, you had a chance to drive over the bridges or see the bridges. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, a flawless experience for me. And uh, I've been over more than, more than, uh, uh, the number of times I can count on one hand, um, that is a shining example of what can be. And uh, it, it's not just an example for, for uh, folks in Kentucky or Indiana, but there are people around the country and around the world looking at uh, the art of what is possible, and that's proof positive. Your two predecessors were very involved in it, really Mitch Daniels yeah. more than Mike Pence, but Mike Pence at the tail end of it. You, you're, you're following in his footsteps here. What is the thing about Mike Pence that you're the most similar to that people wouldn't have, that didn't miss a beat when you took over after he left to go to D.C. and you were elected? I think we both um, try to maintain a sunny disposition. I think we're both in a good mood um, and uh, we see the good in, in people and uh, seek, to, seek to work with others. What are you the most different at? What, what, what differentiates the two of you? I, I think I'm funnier and I'm certainly taller. <laughs> no disputing the taller <laughs> fact of it. Uh, as as we, we talk though seriously about things that are going on the national stage, it's impossible to ignore what's happening yeah. with the movement about sexual harassment yeah. right oh, now. Oh yeah, um, I was gonna say, I try to, I try to ignore um, outside of my lane, but, but you're right, and I think if there's any silver lining on this front, it is that um, there is there's strength in numbers, and the more, the more folks that we learn about seemingly every day, unfortunately, 
um, who have been hurt or have been victimized. Um, I'm glad they're stepping forward and I'm glad their voices are being heard. And, and I'm rooting for justice to prevail. Um, I, I know how, or I can only imagine how hard it has been to be silent for so long. And, um, and I'm rooting for them. And if there's, if there's anything that we can do to be of help, we're, 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 um, we have something that we're known for, and that's our Hoosier hospitality. And we're, we're, we always run to help, not away from it. Uh, on this front as well. Elected officials in Indiana have not been caught up in this as of yet, but if a lawmaker is accused of it, should they step down? How do you approach, uh, what's your I, take on that? I think they need to recognize their wrongdoing and, and clean up their house and uh, focus on, on what's, what's most important and uh, public service should probably be set aside while you're tending to your own affairs. Okay, last question for you. We fast forward to December 2018. And God willing, you and I are sitting back in these chairs and we're talking about 2018. And I say, what was your biggest success of 2018? The same question I asked you to start off this mm. interview. What will be your biggest success in 2018? And you can't say the overall session. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that in a state like Indiana that has such a rich agricultural and manufacturing heritage, um, that we have seen massive improvement in terms of skilling up our workforce, that we are filling all the 92,000 unfilled jobs, that, um, that we are filling those 30,000 job commitments at a record pace, and the folks are, are embracing the change that's coming at us, not responding to it. And you'll find a way of getting Hoosiers skilled and ready to take those jobs that right now you have the jobs and, and not the Hoosiers to take. 2018 is all about people, people, people.